they got married, their early years would be easy. Why? Because you would think that this is Khadija, that's Rasulullah, Allah loves the two of them. Their early years are going to be the easiest. Wallah, they had the most difficult early years. And there Allah was showing us that sometimes even Muhammad's early years and his marriage are difficult. Not just you. If in your early years you can't have children, then the creation I loved more than any other creation couldn't have children who stayed alive in his early years. Rasulullah has a son Qasim, he dies. He has a son Abdullah, he dies. And could you imagine in those early years when he walks in the streets, especially after he had announced his prophethood and he had been married for a while, people would come and say to him, Abtar! Abtar! Means the one with no line. Imagine, Rasulullah announces his prophethood and he's walking in the streets, Al As ibn Wa'il, father of Amr ibn Al As would come and walk in the street and he'd look at him and say, Abtar, where's your children? Do not in your marriages in the early days when there are no children, imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is punishing me. Rasulullah was being punished by Allah. No, in life sometimes we're tested with our wealth or with our health or with our education or with our children. That's an equation in life. There is no one on this earth who will not be tested in one of these four areas. Rasulullah therefore has to wait. He hears these people saying, Abtar, 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 until Allah reverses the verse. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna a'tayna kal kawthar. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Khadija and Rasulullah Fatima al-Zahra, salawatullah wa salamu alayhi wa And you find that within the traditions when Fatima was born, Rasulullah would always come and smell her and he would say that when I come to smell Fatima, I remember the smell of Jannah. There is the smell of paradise that comes from Fatima to Zahra, which is an indication that Rasulullah would have gone on an ascension and he would have smelled that smell. And therefore, whenever he'd see Fatima, he would smell her and remember Jannah. You'd find, you know, when Khadija gave birth to Fatima, do you think there were many women who'd come and congratulate her? Today, you may have a baby shower and many women around you. Many women who'd come and say, congratulations, Khadija al Kubra, none of the women came next to her. They said to her, you marry Muhammad, the imposter, the magician, the sorcerer, and you expect us to help you when you give birth? Do you know her house was empty? But Allah plans, you plan, and Allah is the greatest of planner. The narration states that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw Khadija with nobody to look after her, and normally as a lady, you want your sisters, you want your mother, you want family. But when nobody was around Khadija, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hadiths, authentic hadiths say that Allah sent Maryam, the mother of Jesus, and Eve, the wife of Adam, and Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh, and Kulthum, the sister of Musa, to help Khadija give birth to Fatima. You find when she gave birth to Fatima to Zahra, the narration say to us that she gave birth five years into the prophethood of Rasulullah, in the year 615. And in that year, 615, what do the narration state? They state that when she was born, Fatima al Zahra was born in the most turbulent time for Rasulullah. Never, ever did Rasulullah face as much turbulence as in those years. Imagine the young Fatima, after the age of only two, three, you find they've placed economic sanctions on Rasulullah.